uh, I'm going to discuss a topic tuberculosis which is a part of our syllabus okay so firstly what point to be we, we are going to discuss our first the introduction of tuberculosis like uh, what is a uh, mean by tuberculosis what is actual condition then their etiology the what is the reason for that particular disease which is etiology then uh, how it can spread and symptoms of that particular disease then epidemiology what is the status of that particular disease worldwide then risk factor and then important facts which all healthcare professionals and normal people should know and pathogenesis the events and development of that particular disease so let's get right into it so let's start with introduction actually tuberculosis tuberculosis is the uh, it come from two latin words it form it, it is a composition of two latin words uh, which is tubercle and osis tubercle means the round nodule swelling tubercle means a round nodule swelling you can call it as a granuloma okay because of uh, some causative agents in that particular site and osis means the condition so accordingly the round nodule swelling condition is called that situation that condition is called as tuberculosis so tuberculosis uh, it is a disease so how how uh, we are going to uh, define it like it is the most prevalent communicable you can call it as a contagious because it can spread easily by a uh, coughing or sneezing through a uh, nuclear droplets okay uh, so it is a most prevalent communicable chronic specific inflammatory infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis in human okay so in human the mycobacterium tuberculosis produces the which is responsible for the tuberculosis disease and in uh, animals there is a another species that is mycobacterium bovis which is responsible for producing tuberculosis disease in animal okay so let's uh, uh, go to the next slide okay so the tuberculosis disease is actually classified on the basis of uh where infection is produced the site of infection okay so usually the pulmonary tuberculosis is most common tuberculosis okay 90 percent of tuberculosis is caused uh, which are worldwide which are a pulmonary type okay respiratory uh, related tuberculosis so uh, the type are pulmonary tuberculosis the pulmonary tuberculosis having two subtypes primary pulmonary tuberculosis and secondary tuberculosis okay so what is primary and secondary how how it can classify on which basis so the primary tuberculosis it is the infection of an individual who has not been previously infected or immunized is called primary tuberculosis or gones complex or you can call it as a childhood tuberculosis okay and in case of secondary tuberculosis the infection that individual who has been previously infected or sensitized is called secondary or 
पोस्ट प्राइमरी और यू कैन कॉल्ड इट एज अ री इन्फेक्शन और क्रोनिक ट्यूबिकलॉसिस ओके सो इन केस ऑफ प्राइमरी देर इज नो इन्फेक्शन प्रीवियसली प्रोड्यूस्ड एंड इन केस ऑफ सेकेंडरी ट्यूबिकलॉसिस uh might be that particular uh, microorganism is uh, in retention phase of that on that particular uh, site of infection uh, ultimately after some time it it will be reactivated and that uh, particular reinfection will produce that chronic tuberculosis is called as secondary tuberculosis okay and furtherly other class is extra pulmonary tuberculosis matlab uh, पलमनरी रूट छोड़ के ठीक है तो एक्स्ट्रा पलमनरी ट्यूबिकलॉसिस इंक्लूड लिम्फ नो ट्यूबिकलॉसिस देन प्लूरल ट्यूबिकलॉसिस देन टीबी ऑफ अपर एयरवे लाइक यू लाइक टीबी यू कैन कॉल इट द टीबी ऑफ नजो फैरिंग्स ओके देन स्केलेटल ट्यूबिकलॉसिस देन जी आई टी गैस्ट्रो इंटेस्टिन ट्रैक ट्यूबिकलॉसिस देन जेनाइटो यूर ओके so next point is the this disease is a uh, uh, remain out of control in many developing nations this point is uh, very crucial like this disease because it can easily spread by coughing and by sneezing through droplets through uh, water through air okay this disease remain out of control in many developing nations because it is a contagious disease communicable disease so and uh, usually attacks the lungs but it can also affect any part of the body if that particular granuloma is liquefied it leaks automatically through blood it can spread overall in our body anywhere okay so next point is the how our uh, so next point is how this uh, tuberculosis is transmitted and uh, caused okay first point is a uh, person to person like uh, person to person through the air by person with active tuberculosis disease of lungs by coughing or sneezing then second is ingestion of uh, m bovis like mycobacterium bovis it is uh, another uh, uh, another species of mycobacterium uh like uh, less frequently uh, transmitted by ingestion of m bovis uh, actually in case of uh, unpasteurized milk there is a chances of mycobacterium bovis uh, infection because in pa- unpasteurized milk there will be the presence of uh, m bovis bacteria okay so uh so please before Uh, before drinking milk please pasteurize it okay then inoculation so uh, inoculation means you can call it as a uh, vaccination uh, actually inoculation means the introduction of antigen introduction of any antigenic any pathogenic substance or a vaccine into the body to produce immunity against that particular specific disease okay right then transplacental route through uh, placenta to the baby then uh, lab accident mm, it is a rare route but might be it can spread so overall the etiology is the tuberculosis is caused by an organism called mycobacterium tuberculosis that is spread from person to person through the air okay the mycobacterium tuberculosis are sometimes called tubercle bacilli okay 
next point is uh, etiology as we already discussed the tb is caused by the organism mycobacterium tuberculosis and the mycobacterium tuberculosis organism are sometimes called tubercle bacilli okay the another species of mycobacterium tuberculosis are uh, mycobacterium africanum mycobacterium microti mycobacterium lepri mycobacterium ovium mycobacterium acysticum okay then the characters before uh, before studying any uh, disease uh, treatment and diagnosis we must know the what is the causative agent of that uh, disease and how it looks what is their monograph and uh, what is the features and characteristic of that uh, organism so we can uh, we can uh, target that uh, particular bacteria and uh, then and then we are uh, going to able to uh, kill we are going to able to kill that particular bacteria okay so we must know we should know the characteristic of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, stain okay so what are the characteristic of mycobacterium tuberculosis so first characteristic is it is a gram positive rod shaped bacteria you can you can see here okay gram positive rod shaped bacteria second the length of that bacteria is near about 2 to 4 micron and the diameter of that bacteria is near about a 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 micron okay then it multiply very slowly it multiply uh, very slowly uh, their proliferation rate is very slow uh, it's like uh, near about it takes 18 to 24 hours for one dividation okay then uh, remain dormant for decades it can remain uh, in dormancy phase for uh, for years okay then uh, next is uh, it is not spore forming non mobile bacteria it can stay at one site it is non spore forming bacteria it, it is divided very slowly then have a lipid rich cell wall with 50 percent mycolic acid so mycolic acid it is the uh, acid because of that part mycolic acid that bacteria get uh, very very uh, protective cell wall from macrophages so how it is protective we are going to see in pathogenesis okay it is aerobic so it required oxygen to uh, do uh, respiration and other metabolic activities and uh, it is a mesophile bacteria so actually what is meso mesophile mesophile means uh, uh, an organism which grow at moderate temperature between 20 degrees celsius and 45 degrees celsius with an uh, optimum growth temperature in range of 30 to 39 degrees celsius they are isolated in both soil and water environment okay so that point is mycolic acid so here i already depicted like mycolic acid uh, present in its cell wall makes it acid fast bacteria so what what that uh, macrophages having lysosomes uh, acidic uh, enzymes that ac acidic enzyme uh, can't digest that particular bacteria okay so uh, so uh, let's see how it can spread how it can spread uh, that tuberculosis how it can spread in uh, uh, what manner and what way okay so first point is the coughing coughing without covering mouth okay as i earlier said that uh, particular bacteria is uh, actually in uh, nuclei droplets that droplets having lots of uh, uh, tubercle bacilli 
so it can easily sp uh, inhaled by other person and through uh, three to four weeks up to automatically it, it can get infected he can get infected okay then uh, next is uh, splitting everywhere so don't split anywhere okay then third is a uh, crowded place with a uh, poor ventilation so for the any microorganism any uh, bacilli any fungi any uh, bacteria required a uh, humidity to sp uh, spread that is a favorable environment to grow okay and to infect another persons so this is this is how it can spread then next the symptoms of uh, tuberculosis so the first symptom of tuberculosis is the persistent coughing the persistent coughing uh, again and again frequently uh, that particular victim will cough then chest pain very severe chest pain uh, in frequent manner and then <coughs> coughing with uh, extreme condition coughing with uh, blood sputum okay coughing with blood sputum then uh, shortness of breath you cannot breathe uh, easily because their respiratory system will be infected by uh, uh th that syst uh, respiratory system was infected by that particular organism so there is a failure to do their actual work uh, the system can't do actual work okay so then next is uh urine discoloration the discoloration of urine is like a dark urine discoloration you can see there is a darkish discoloration this is a uh diagnostic uh, diagnostic tools for the tuberculosis okay then the uh, like fever and chills frequently fever and chills occur then uh, fatigues fatigue is there uh, in symptoms of tuberculosis so uh, in epidemiology so how often this drug uh, this disease is spread in worldwide so roughly one of the every three people on earth is infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, that survey is actually done by who in 2008 the distribution is very uneven with the highest incidences found in southern asia and africa okay and the uh, that uh, the united states in the united states about 13 million people about 13 million people have uh, primarily lung tuberculosis evidence by the positive skin test but uh, there is no signs and symptoms occurred uh, in that particular victims okay and uh, every year approximately 1.7 million people develop tuberculosis uh, tuberculosis kills about 2 million people each year and the, it's equivalent to uh, it's equivalent to uh, 125 cases in 1 lakh population okay the emergence of that particular drug resistance organism uh, threaten to make this disease once again incurable okay this is all about their epidemiology next topic is risk factor of tuberculosis so <coughs> it is very simple like uh, low socioeconomic status low hygienic no hygiene over there so automatically bacteria have more scope to grow over there than crowded living condition as uh, uh, as recently i said 
then disease diseases that weaken human like uh, hiv automatically your immune system is uh, weak so any kind of viral infection any kind of bacterial infection any any kind of infection easily grow easily uh, produces infection easily grab any system of that particular uh, victim which have uh, hiv which have any infectious disease and uh, immune suppression activity okay in case of immunosuppression steroid uh, treatment automatically it can easily affect because there is no defense against that particular bacteria so then uh, next is migration from country with high number of cases so as like corona okay uh, you can uh, you can easily uh, correlate with it then alcoholism okay so alcoholism is one of the reason of uh, tb then uh, recent tuberculosis infection with last two years like secondary tuberculosis okay so important facts of tuberculosis uh, they, are, they are that facts are must known to all people and all uh, healthcare professionals okay so first is <coughs> millions of tubercle bacilli in lungs mainly in cavities there are millions of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis in lungs mainly in cavities okay that any uh, person which which is infected and that uh, droplet can spread uh, that droplet can uh, uh, flow can uh, low and you can call it that droplet can spread up to uh, one to three feet so make uh, so maintain the proper distance from in uh, infected person okay then that particular droplet nuclei is is look like uh, this okay you can see then that uh, coughing project droplet nuclei into the air that contain tubercle bacilli and one cuff can release 3000 droplets nuclei one cuff can release 3000 droplet nuclei and one sneeze can release tens of thousands of droplets so be aware next point is our favorite the pathogenesis of that particular disease okay so let's get right into it so the first step in that particular pathogenesis of that disease is exposure to source means the person having tuberculosis disease positive tuberculosis disease when that person is uh, sneezing or coughing it is one condition okay that person is sneezing or coughing automatically the aerosolation the aerosol uh, droplets are uh, forms and which are spread in the air okay and this is second step that aerosolation of droplet nuclei are formed and spread in air automatically that particular bacteria get inhaled by that particular victim that particular person who is going to be infected uh, there is a question mark he is going to be infected or not because there is a uh, some conditions there is there will be not any infection because of their defense respiratory pulmonary defense mechanism their pulmonary defense mechanism is very strong so there will be the uh, many possibilities first possibility is elimination okay so in elimination uh, the bo body can easily eliminate to mucus uh, e easily eliminate uh, that particular bacteria through mucociliary mechanism uh, or uh, through sneezing okay before producing uh, inflammation or be before producing infection before uh, 
uh, getting into the any cell cell compartment okay second possibility is a uh, retention so that particular bacteria can uh, eventually uh, don't grow over there but it can retain over there and uh, suppresses uh, immune system and that particular condition is called as latent tuberculosis it can show the symptoms and signs of tuberculosis by reactivation of that particular uh, bacteria it can uh, it can proliferate over there it can stay for uh, decades uh, in that particular cell in dormancy period and after some time as as i said latent tuberculosis it can infect that particular person uh, we can call it as a secondary tuberculosis too then uh, third is active phase like uh, complete mycobacterium invades to immune response and it it will uh, reflect infection it will leads to overall further uh, problematic condition okay so when that particular bacteria get into the airway and how it can uh, infect that particular person let's see let's uh, discuss okay um, so as i said that particular bacteria reach to lungs or pulmonary alveoli in uh, pulmonary alveoli there is a pulmonary uh, macrophages okay immune system pulmonary, pulmonary macrophages so that bacteria reach into the lung and pulmonary alveoli that bacteria enter into the macrophages and start to grow over there okay start to go over there and uh, how it is happen how it can happen macrophages are uh, the are the immune system now so it can easily uh, er eradicate that particular bacteria from our body is it can easily engulf it uh, that particular bacteria can uh, phag phagocytized by that uh, macrophages but uh, in that condition in <coughs> mycobacterium tuberculosis condition what happens let's discuss okay when macrophage detect the presence of pathogen that is a uh, empty pathogen it captured and phagocytized the pathogen okay this procedure is called as phagocytosis and in the macrophages the vessel which encapsulate pathogen into the macrophage is called phagosome okay so that phagosome vessel is a uh, encapsulate the uh, bacteria tubercle bacilli and in macrophage there is lysosome on other side okay so on normal immune response the fusion of phagosome and lysosome occur lysosome having digestive acidic enzyme so the on immune response the phagolysosome in which pathogen is dissolved in acid and eliminate it okay but here in case of tuberculosis phagolysosome is does not form because of acid fast cell of uh, acid fast cell wall of that uh, bacteria so eventually the fusion is inhibited fusion is not occur the phagolysosome is not formed so that particular bacteria will stay in macrophages okay so that mycobacterium tuberculosis remain in macrophages without being de detected by immune system so that macrophages is protected in that uh, macro uh, sorry so the that uh, mitochondria uh, so that uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis is protected in macrophages okay ultimately that bacteria replicate inside the macrophages and after after some time after 3 weeks uh, had that time the primary reinfection primary infection of tuberculosis uh, is occur okay and after the cell mediated immunity activation so 
that all leads to formation of granuloma formation formation of granuloma okay the granulomatous lesions begins to form so if immune suppression occur because of uh, bacteria because of uh, be because of no detection of that particular uh, uh, tuberculosis bacteria so the bacteria cease to grow lesions it start again to grow in another macrophages it can infect another macrophages too okay that condition is called as reactivation it can enter into the another macrophages and it can uh, regain their proliferation okay so after granulomatous lesions formation there will be the uh, two possibilities first is the lesion liquefies and second is the bacteria coughed up in sputum and uh, it will uh, that our respiratory system is trying to uh, get uh, expelled uh, trying to get uh, uh, get out of our body okay but when that uh, condition this is lesion liquefy that particular lesion particular granulomatous lesion is uh, get liquefied it leads to spread to the blood and then to the organ through blood vessel it that liquefies uh, uh, granulomatous lesions having a strain of that particular bacteria which is causative agent of tuberculosis so it can automatically spread to the another organs so another organ get infected other organs are infected so that particular organs are uh, can't do their work enough so automatically it leads to death it's all about the tuberculosis pathogenesis okay so thank you